Yere. Check, 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 check. Heavyweights Radio, you know what it is. That's that new hot stuff right there. We got we got someone real special in the building, man. Truly, what up? Let them know who we got, man. The one and only, man. My mic's finally on. See, man, I'm glad I wasn't talking too soon. But, man, John Frashanti is in the building. Brand new label. Got his artist. You might need to squeeze in a little bit, fellas, so we can, you know, see everybody up in here. Yeah, yeah. We in the building, yeah. Black Knights in the, the Black building. Knights. Black Knights in the building. LBC. Yeah. Compton. Yeah. Uh, Compton. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's right. That's right. And uh, man, first of all, man, let's you know we, we got to start with you. Obviously, you know you, you've done so much, man. Incredible things, you know. You've been accolades after accolades. For, you know, one of the greatest guitarists, you know, influenced a lot of people, done some amazing things with it. Man, it's, you know, I mean, Chili Peppers, Mars Volta, to, you know, your own labels, you know. We just got to just, you know, thanks for coming through, man. First of all, man, it's really dope. But, uh, but yeah, you know, see, I want to I touch just like a little quick second, you know, on the guitar. Um, you want the mic? You want to take it out? You can take it out. Oh, you, you, yeah, yeah. Hopefully so. Have him talk into it. Have him talk into the mic. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. What's so, up, John? <laughs> oh, you over there? You over there? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We doing I'm that. I'm with y'all. But uh, but yeah, you you know you did you you started young, um, and and hooked up with you know the Chili Peppers and everything, and uh, and 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 Rick Rubin, you know came along after you guys, you know, started doing some stuff, you know, Rick Rubin's a big influence on a lot of, you know, what we're doing over here, you know, he's yeah. one of my idols and everything. Um, any cool stories you could say, you know, talk about with Rick Rubin or anything, you know, that, off the head? Um, bad vibes? What? No, 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 <laughs> no bad vibes. Uh, no, like, like uh, I just, at this point in my life, I just find it interesting that I had such a close relationship with him and him being one of the pioneers of hip hop and stuff and right. I came into doing this kind of music like not from being on a path that Rick would have advised me to go right, on. Right, I, right. You were I, studying the greats, you know, yeah, the I mean, guitarists. I, and well, yeah, but but uh, but I mean what led me to doing this was like doing the electronic like avant-garde electronic music uh -huh. that's not at all aimed to be uh, popular or commercial. Right, right. And Eventually, I did that for long enough where it was like, oh, yeah, now I can do hip hop. You, uh -huh. you know, like it wasn't, it wasn't ever something I was aiming at. And so, like, uh, I really, in in choosing to go in the uncommercial path, like I, I it just, uh, d divide this 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 discon disconnected me from Rick. Uh -huh. But uh, once I started doing hip hop, it was interesting because then I'd listen to like LL Cool J record that he made or something. And, right. And. Uh, I, I, I have insight not only into what he, what he was offering as a producer, uh, but but uh, but in terms of like I'm using those same machines and st like the 707 and stuff. Uh -huh. So so uh, so to hear him doing the rad st stuff that he was doing on the 707 back you know in like '85 yeah. or something, it's yeah. just fun for me. And yeah, to have that like having worked with him for so long, I know what he, I he, a lot of what he gave to my band was like. Uh, uh, drum ideas and vocal ideas, so I I I uh, have that experience of working with him. So he's one of the pioneers of hip hop. That that yeah. when I listen to him, not only do I do I uh, have a certain insight into the music, but also into how his mind works and stuff. So right, right. Yeah, like like uh, so yeah, it's a it's an interesting just. just you know, circumstance of fate that that right, like that right. this person I worked with so long, I ended up having this other connection to besides what we did, uh -huh. and the fact that I ended up being a hip hop producer myself. Right, know? right, yeah, taking coming all the way to doing labels and stuff like that. Yeah, so I think you know, I think about him a lot and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'm sure, I'm sure you, you know, I'm sure you draw influences from you know all over the place. But uh, who are some of your influences that you you know? Can uh, talk? I'm sure it changes. Yeah, I. You know, I'm I'm the opposite of a lot of people in that way. Like I I make uh, I I tend to listen to things when it's similar to something that I'm doing. Uh -huh. It's not so much that I listen to things and then want to do something like that. Like, oh right, right. Like like uh, like like 
So, so, but uh, in in hip hop, you mean? Yeah, like oh, just, I just you know, I just really liked the way it was in the eighties. Like, like uh, I really liked the way it was in the eighties and early nineties and mm-hmm. stuff. And, the and so, era. yeah, the the great, you know, the, like Marley Marl is one of my favorite producers. Definitely, and, definitely. And, you know, but like, like. Uh, yeah, like like uh, I I like it when the people are real experimental and stuff, and 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 when they didn't really clearly know th- what they were doing yet. That's right. what I really learn a lot from as a musician, right. you know. Well, just mentioning Molly yeah. Mall just says a lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. A lot yeah. of people aren't gonna say that, you know. They're gonna go to you know a little something more obvious or something. But you coming know. from New York, yeah, no, I see his productions as being a really immaculate. Oh thing, yeah. yeah, innovative for its time and yeah. everything. Yeah, and, and uh, you know, I want to congratulate you too, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Yeah, you know? uh, that's that's big. Yeah, definitely, definitely, up, definitely, definitely. Come on, <laughs> give it up, everybody. For you know? real, man. There's so many things to talk about with you, uh, you know. But uh, you have a label now. Let's get you know to the thing. I, what, what do you mean I have a label? Well, I heard you know. You <laughs> I, 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 no, you put out records now. You put out no. records yourself, no, no. Or, or some. You're, you're just working with these guys, or they're putting. Well, no, I, my, the my records come out on a label called Record Collection, and that's the same label that this album is put <laughs> okay. out on. Yeah, okay. my, I've been putting out records on that label for like ten years. I stand corrected. I, yeah. You know, yeah. Okay. Obviously. Okay. Well, you, you know, how, how'd you hook up with these guys, the Black Knights? You know, now I'm, I'm sure you, you've done all that work. You know, RZA. I'm sure maybe met him through them or how did this yeah, come like about? Yeah, like I've known Monk for about the same amount of time I've been friends with RZA and mm-hmm. and I guess that was about uh, six years ago or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like about six years ago. Yeah. About six years ago, you know, we was, uh, RZA, you know, you know, brought us together and we started chilling, you know, but then me and John, you know, built a relationship on the side, you know, as far as, you know, he was doing his little projects and EPs out for, uh, if you ever heard of the Imperium, you know, which was a good record that he had put out, and I really dig that, and, you know, RZA put some of it in, in his movie that he did, The Man with the Iron Fist, but then John, he was doing his next project, and he was working with my boy Kinetic from Killer Army, and then, but he had asked me, you know, to come through, you know, and I was like, yeah, what's up, you know? So we uh, uh, did a recording, and then uh, it turned into another recording that we did on this album, which was the l- 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 first we did the FM, yeah, then, I mean, we did, uh, the Le- then we did the Let Lefer. Well, Le- Letter Lefer is, is the okay. album that FM is oh, on. Oh, FM is on, okay. And then, yeah. you know, then we, uh, so then we built more relationship like that. And then, you know, we kind of built a nice little vibe that we had. And so he asked me to come through again. You know, I did a track for him. And then you know we, we you know we, we hang out more and stuff you know me him and RZA and then, but also on our own you know because we like we like to watch boxing matches and stuff we get together <laughs> over John House and throw some box. but then you know uh, he asked me to bring Crisis the Sharpshooter in you know which is my partner from the Black Knights you know that's our group which was we were signed to Wu Tang you know yeah in '98 first we debuted on the Swarm or whatever you yeah. know then we was on right. all like RZA's solo projects the Bobby Digital's and stuff and Loud what? Uh, Loud had a single on yeah then we had yep. then we were signed to Loud we yep. were signed to Loud actually we did a deal with Loud but then that's when Loud that got bought out by Sony and then once they Sony didn't pick up no hip hop uh, acts so Loud uh, Loud lost the, their record label and right. then so they, that's how uh, Mob Deep's was free agents. Uh, Fat Joe and Big Pun's projects had got put on that side. Then Wu Tang, they had just dropped that Iron Flag, but that was the last thing going. And then that messed up because we was on Wu Tang slash Loud, and Loud was putting out the production. But once that got bought out, and Sony didn't pick up no hip hop. That kind of left us on a on a bridge, you know. Right. So then, you know, we was more or less still. That's when we came with the Every Night to Black. Yeah, Night. we dropped the Every Night to Black label. Night independently, you know. Black mm-hmm. Entertainment. And which we did good. We sold 10,000 units independent. You know, as far as RZA was gonna put that out, but at the same time, he had a whole lot going. Yeah. With his ventures, and he had just started getting into entertainment and stuff. As far as the acting, you know, so. You know, at the same time, but we still had to keep it mo- moving musically, you know? Yeah. So we put out Every Night's a Black Night. That caught a buzz and stuff. And then we started, we went back in the studio with RZA and started a project called All Skills No Luck. But, you know, th- due to the fact of he started doing more Wu-Tang, Wu-Tang and so, and then that, that project got more or less put in the hands of the label 
And then it was like it didn't come out again. Yeah, huh? due to the fact of certain things. But <laughs> during this time, that's when me and John was still working together, and we built up, you know. And then more recordings that came. We did a first song, which is off the album called "The Keys to the Chastity Belt." You know, that was the actual first song we recorded with, uh, as far as Black Knights and John Frusciante. And you know, then you know it was like so we came back to do another track. And then more or less, it wasn't never, we, we never came in on the sense of let's make an album. But, you know, then John started sending me like song, a couple songs, you know, we had got into about like say seven, eight songs in, and he sent these songs to my email and stuff like, check these out. I was like, I emailed him back like, John, it sounds like we got a little something. Yeah. So next thing you know, we did a couple more recordings and then he sent me something back. Um, but this time he had like uh, some samples. He had some uh, introductions. He had, he had basically albums. I was like, oh, we we got a little something. Yeah. But by this time we was already uh, in in a fluctuation of making music, and it was so organically. We by this time we got a good like twenty songs now. You're right, full projects but exactly, already coming but, together. But the one thing we did, we started. It was like he was like, all right, he came with. I was like, I want y'all to come in come over and then we'll sit down and see what we got right. so boom we listened to that and then not only did we have the medieval chamber which we dropped and i'm glad that he put it together as as perfection and professionally as he did he but we noticed we had more material so now we're three albums in you know right the second so one is like called 45 songs in the last year and a half yeah you know <laughs> so it's crazy 45 songs in a year and a half <laughs> yo what's the what's the vibe like working with john in the studio though yeah you want to answer that crisis go ahead it, it's chill it's regular it's regular life that's that's what the whole thing is you feel me it ain't no pressure everybody's just doing what they do adding what they add on to, I mean, the, to the song to the music right because you know it, it seems like it'd have to be a lot of like you would feel like you you working with one of the best guitar players of, of our time, you know what I mean? You yeah. would feel like a lot of pressure, you know what I'm saying? Uh, it's, it, I love the challenge. It's exactly. definitely you know a challenge because he, 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 he be know whack. all genres of music. You <laughs> feel me? You can't be whack. No, nah, you can't be whack. One thing, pressure bust pipes, not, not Black Knights. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> Yo, the Black Knights is in the building, man. Yeah, exactly. Because you got to realize we was also seasoned by hip hop's legendary yeah. Yeah. group. Which no, is Wu Tang. Yeah, you come know. on. Respect. Exactly. So they have Respect. nine of the illest MCs that ever touched. And beyond them. that, you know, exactly. they have other, you know, you know they, they have, crew. You know, and you then know. you got RZA as far as production. Yeah. But working with John, you know, it was a different sense because he's coming from the rock and roll and he's very musically inclined yeah. and, and sitting with him just on times where right. we sit he took me through ranges of music We're like we'll sit down and you know one one thing he'll pull out some Jane's addiction or you know he put me up on things like that or Depeche Mode but then you know he'll go to some like uh uh, B B Bonnie Brown Love, you know some old '70s music or some yeah. Don D Donnie Summers and stuff yeah. like this. Yeah. Then he'll play some Ice Cube, you yeah. know, the, the, the <laughs> Eminem, you know. Then, 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 you know, we'll have to be off some wine or something, watching some, and then some, you know, I love, you know, black and whites. Then, Beethoven you know, he'll, he'll pull everything. up some Beethoven or some right, Mozart. Right. So the music range, it, it, it's like it's, it yeah. ranges. It it's goes unlimited. Past, it's unlimited. It goes from A to Z, back right. to A to Z again, and then we're all. Over, that you know? brings, yeah, that, yeah exactly. that brings it back, you know, yeah. even to you doing a lot of electronic, you know, music now and everything. Um, how, how, how did that kind of like, how, how did that come about? Did you thinking, you know, to, like to, to put it out after you've been doing so much legendary rock stuff and known for something else? Uh, you know, I, I just go the direction that interests me in, in music. Like, like uh, I like electronic instruments because. Uh, you don't depend on other people, uh, and like, like uh, if, you know, if somebody learns how to engineer themselves and, and program all in machines themselves, you you don't ever have to be in a band with somebody that you don't like just because they right. play drums or they play <laughs> bass or something or they're Do a singer. They like you can ch choose who you work with, uh -huh. you know. And so that that's what's come naturally about this. Like any musicians that I've worked with in the last five years since I or six years since I quit the band, like. Mm -hmm. Like uh, it, the 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 musical relationship comes from the genuine human relationship. You right. Know? Yeah. Definitely. Like, you know, like, if it doesn't start organically, yeah, like you mentioned. And, it's you got know, to start with that. And I and has I to. and this way, like I I have I have autonomy because like I don't I don't have to uh, 
I don't have to interact with anybody unless I find the interaction useful <laughs> musically, you know, like unless they're going right. to add something. So right. when these guys, you know, when these guys get on the mic, like they they come with full confidence and full belief in themselves and full full uh uh, they trust their own creative sense. They're uh-huh. not. They're not like worried about what I think about something. They they believe in what they're saying. They believe in Dope. their styles, and so that works well with me because that's how I am. I believe in what I'm doing, and I don't give a fuck what anybody thinks of it. <laughs> and 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 like like and and so since they believe in themselves in a similar kind of a way, it just works perfectly without anybody having to like tell anybody what to do mm-hmm. or anybody having right. to guide anybody or. And so it's such a pleasant kind of musical relationship that yeah. it's not like that in bands. Everybody thinks you got to be at each other's throat, you got to be fighting <laughs> each other, you got to be criticizing each other, you got to be molding each other. Right. With this, like I'm not trying to change them, they're not trying to change me, and we enjoy hanging out together. We enjoy listening to music or watching fights or whatever it is. Right. And right, right. and the musical relationship just comes out of that in a really natural way. Our sessions. They're not like a like at a recording studio at a rock band. Everybody's just trying to aim at like, first of all, aim at being good in everybody's mind, and everybody yeah. has a different <laughs> idea of what good is. And then, but then it, you also have like uh, a lot of a lot of uh, uh, a lot. You're under a lot of pressure. You're trying to aim at finishing. Right, like right, like yeah. everybody's got their mind on. How, how do I get to the point where I don't have to do anything anymore? Mm-hmm. You know, with me that 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 never ends until the song's over. But I'm, I love being in the, in making a song like, the whole to production. be in the process mm-hmm. of making a song. That's that's the goal for me. Like, if I could press a button and have a finished song, I wouldn't do that. Oh, like, yeah, I, yeah. I like I like being in the process. And so, that's in this case, they're they enjoy being in the process with me in that way. When we're when we're you know recording. We're hanging out. We're smoking and right. drinking and enjoying the atmosphere, and and uh, we like being in that play, in that creative zone of of of, uh, um, of being in the creative process ma- together. Making and we, the magic. We, the, to me, the the fact that it ends up being a, a song, a finished song at the end, that's just a byproduct of it. That's not <laughs> anything that I'm aiming right. at. I I enjoy every single step of the process. That yeah. You know, so, that's dope. That's yeah. dope. That's real dope. I, I just I was just thinking about it. I, I wanted to be, before I forgot about it. Um, George Clinton also kind of early on kind of came into you guys uh, paths or whatever or something yeah, we, or how, yeah, did, we how were, did that we, come uh, about? Uh, Rizzo was doing uh, his his Rizzo was working on his Bobby Digital uh, the Digital Bullet album. He was working on Digital Bullet album as well as him and Shavo from System of the Down. Digi-snacks. They was, uh, yeah, not Digital Bullet. He was working on Digi Snacks album. Pardon me, the Digi Snacks, and uh, and us at the same time he was working with Shavo from System of the Down, the bass player. And then they had a, a group called The Chosen, and so they had brought they had brought George Clinton in to do some recordings on the, on those type of projects or whatever. So we was chilling in, in the studio with George and everything, which was a nice vibe and everything, you know. Due to the fact of you know that's another thing RZA does. RZA is like you know, he's the abbot, but he also brings a lot of these good nature, good musicians around and puts things together. You know, that's he's, dope. he's yeah. a very good component as well. He's he putting, sees something exactly, in somebody. Yeah, and, and, and puts together. play and put places. Even if he's dope. he's not working at that sense on that hill, you know, just mm. the relationships that you know, just meeting people. Just that's right. how this came about. You know, just the people that he'll put you around and the people he surrounds himself around right. is very is very good you know which is which is much yeah. I, why I respect that man so George you is know? on that album? Yeah, yeah George is on the uh, Digi Snacks album that yeah. uh, we did we was in the studio we did we did that did it, then he worked on the Chosen album but the Digi Snacks album was the RZA album that the last project that he put out right. and then you know we toured on that but yeah, yeah. He, he got like two recordings off of them then also he did a uh George did the last last album, the Eight Diagram, Eight Diagram. Yeah. Out, out for that session that he got out of there. George stayed then, working. Exactly stayed. Then RZA, <laughs> RZA got him on the uh, the Wu Tang project, which was the Eight yeah. Diagram, the last Wu Tang uh, st- st- studio recording that they did. You mm-hmm. know, and uh, it was like so they yeah. got him on that project. So it was it was kind of uh, good. It was a good process that came up out of yeah, there. George is the man. Yeah. Uh-huh. You, you work with George, so how did how did George? No, no, know? Th- that, he, he produced the second Red Hot Chili Peppers album. Oh, okay. You were already done by I, then, huh? No, no, no. I wasn't in the band yet. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, like, okay. Like I, that was 
I was only 16 years old when they made that, or 15 years old when they oh, made that the, album. Oh, the second album. Yeah, yeah, they made three albums before I ever joined. I, so George produced the the second one. Uh huh. But uh, but yeah, and, yeah. I, that, I guess that was the last thing I did with with uh, Flea and Anthony was uh, George asked, wanted us to wanted us to cover. Uh, he was doing an album of cover songs, and so uh, uh, wanted you to do. Yeah. Something. So so he asked me to to do it and then I got Flea and Anthony on it uh -huh. as well and and uh, so yeah and that song ended up being the uh, the swan song of me with those guys uh -huh. so, so so it's a uh, it's a it's a uh, you know 50 minutes into the hour you know what I'm saying the show we're gonna go and play some of this medieval you know what I'm talking about get, get it with the medieval yeah, chambers uh, on this we're gonna play a little bit music. yo so it. look um we want to play a couple of these joints and uh, let's see if we could get some bars. You know what I'm talking about? All right, for sure. Definitely. All right, so let's play a couple of these joints. First, we're going to get into this video, man. We got the Black Knights in the building. We got the legendary John. You know what time, time, ah, how we do it. Heavyweights Radio. Let's get into this music Heavyweights video. Heavyweights Radio. Be Real TV. God damn it! Heavyweights Radio, we live, y'all. Be Real TV, we got the homeboys, the Black Knights in the building. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Hey, yo, we about to get into this medieval chambers, man. Uh-huh. Let's do this shit. Truly I, yeah. do what we do, baby. Heavyweights Radio, let's go. Yo, Black Knights, yeah. John Fashate in the building. Uh, yo, man, we about to get up out of here, man. We, yo, before we leave, can we get a couple of bars? Oh, yeah, for sure. That's how we do in the West Coast. You know it goes <laughs> down. I'm Rugged Monk, this is Christ, this is the Sharpshooter, we the Black Knights, yo, uh, yo, I come through pushing the Bentley with the brains blew out, try to fuck with me and mine, you get your brains blew out, Black Knights, you know what my click be all about, we hit the show, we get the dough, we'll hit your hoe and be out, I'm on the paper route, partner, you should be about yours, if you ain't about paper, reroute yours, either or, be a star, a hit, be a hood legend, cause I'm a dine with the rich, a sleep with yeah. the peasants, deep as the reverend, here you Teach you niggas the lesson, classes and sessions taught by a gangbang veteran, rugged monster, the great one. Can't off the drink off the boot, a full clip of hollow tips, and I ain't scared to give it to you. Party like rock stars, hip hop living through us. From the hood to the burbs, they all feel the music because I let the music abuse it. I stay in tune with myself, my soul, the hood, the globe, the blue and the gold, the North Pole. You already know. Put a couple in your skull like it was part of the show. Clap on you like chlamydia. Come through and Get rid of ya, make situations hideous Tell your whole city ya I'm royalty, that's why I rock my jewels like King Tut Mr. Rugged Monk, I wild out I don't give a fuck when I start shooting Don't ask Howard the Duck There will be blood, motherfucker Ain't nobody waking up from a crime 360 And for the first 48 to arrive I'll be out the comp and swap me uh -huh. New pair of lokes and a fresh pair of dickies Swiftly making that great escape Break the sterile column God, of a God, colorless God, 88 Cause my flow be enlisted, guns be enlisted Rizzo scratched the cereal so they couldn't find Barizdix What is this, amateur night at the Apollo? You brought a knife to a gunfight, swallow these hollows My swagger's an outbreak, it's a contagious disease These niggas so pussy, they max pad me wings Nigga, please, you couldn't fuck with the West Coast killer bees Niggas ain't got nothing for me, bitches adore me Show they loyalty, go make that bread come back and spoil me That's how it goes when you're dealing with royalty Queen in the concrete jungle say they feeling my poetry uh -huh. heavenly psalms got in my heart gun in my palm for you fake niggas that come at me wrong play like Saddam that's how we on it niggas don't want it please believe me my nasty dogs know for easy it's all yeah. turn all time to shine we can go rhyme for rhyme or crime for crime yeah. black nights all the time niggas know I'm down for mine so stop fronting Turnin' like you're tight or something Knowin' besides them shoes, you fools ain't running nothing Hip-hop done lost his backbone Huh Don't get too many Yeah, Black Knights Black Knights Heavyweight Radio Thanks for coming through, man much love. Yeah, 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 Shout yeah. out to Be Real. Got a lot of respect for you, man, and Exclusive. you bringing the people through, and it's all love, man. You got you got an outlet right here if you need, you know what I mean? Just reach out. We got you. Oh, thanks, man. thanks, brother. It's West great. Coast in the building. Yeah, that heavyweight radio, man. Catch oh, yeah. Hold on. Before we go, if you ain't got it, check out that medieval chamber, uh -huh. www.blackknightsmusic.com. That's www. 
B-L-A-C-K-K-N-I-G-H-T-S-M-U-S-I-C.com. Black Knights Medieval Chamber. Find us on Twitter, Black Knights 562, Instagram, Facebook. Heavyweights Radio, we out this bitch.